Hey, this is Vince Kane. I'm president of R.C. Watley, a uh, consulting firm exclusively focused on financial advisors uh, and the financial advisory business. And today I just want to share with you a, uh, some thoughts uh, around the way that we work with our clients, uh, some key points that uh, we feel like make uh, really good, uh, really good practices, really strong advisors, uh, and set them up for, uh, frankly, just a better practice and, and growth. And, and really that starts with this simple, uh, point, the simple phrase of just know it. And that really comes down to, uh, these two words that, that we say that I say often is confidence and conviction. These are the these are the cornerstones of what makes a a good practice, and I don't mean I don't mean uh, frankly BS confidence and conviction. I'm talking about actual real confidence and conviction in what you're doing, and how you do it, and who you do it for, and the team that you surround yourself with. Before I get into some of these key points, I want to just give you a little bit of background. I was very fortunate in my early career to get a couple of really big uh, key principles in this business. One of these key points that I picked up really early in my career that I'm, I'm grateful for, that, that's a big part of our practice today, is uh, something that I picked up from my training at, at uh, Merrill Lynch. We, we jokingly refer to it as Mother Merrill, obviously. But this is, they hired 250 or so people per training class back then in the mid 90s. And this particular one was the training class, the second training class. We're at the uh, we're at the Merrill Lynch training facility in Princeton, New Jersey. This is the last day. This is last meeting on Thursday, the last day of this particular trip. And there's an auditorium. There's 250 uh, trainees in this auditorium. And there's a speaker down front. We're all really excited and looking forward to hearing from this particular speaker because it is um, – one of the uh, sort of respected up and coming financial advisors uh, within the firm. He was probably in his mid thirties from the Midwest, a small, relatively small town in the Midwest. So, um, and, and he was probably producing about $4 million in the mid nineties. So this was obviously someone in the, in the business that we all really aspired to be. And frankly, we're all, really convicted that we could be uh, this person. And, and, the, and, the, and the gentleman was was miked. He had a lavalier on, but he wasn't yet speaking. He was just sort of milling around the front of the, the auditorium. And he singled out this guy in the front row. Uh, and he said, again, he's kind of speaking under his breath. He's not in presentation mode, but he just singles Jim out. And he says, hey, Jim, I see you're from Atlanta. And uh, Jim says, yes. And, and he says, uh, I tell you, I know some good advisors in Atlanta. Uh, who do you think is the best advisor uh, down there? And, and, and Jim thought for just a split second, and he, and he rattled off a name. And, and the, the speaker said, oh, yeah, I, I, know, I know him. They're, they're, they're a great advisor. You know, you're probably right. They probably are the best advisor in Atlanta. And then he looked at Jim and he said, Jim, let me tell you what you got to do. You got to get your stuff together go back to your room, get the first flight back to Atlanta and and call the handful of clients that you currently have and explain to them that they don't need to be doing business with you anymore. They need to be do, doing business with this other guy because he's the best advisor in Atlanta. And that statement kind of hit me like a ton of bricks, it really kind of hit the whole room um, with a lot of with a lot of heat and a lot of force because we were all sitting there thinking about that other person in our home branches that was the best advisor in our opinion. And then he stopped and he started addressing the whole crowd. And he said, you know, how could you possibly convince a client or a prospective client that you're the best at what you do if you don't even believe it? And that's that first sort of point of confidence and conviction. You have to figure out a way for you to know beyond any shadow of a doubt that you and your team are the absolute best at taking care of clients uh, anywhere around, maybe in the country or the world. Uh, and, and this second point is um, from a book that uh, someone told me to read very early in my career. And it's uh, it's this from this guy, uh, Frank Bedger. He's uh, really a contemporary of, uh, of Dale Carnegie or, or maybe even Zig Ziglar for a little bit later time frame. 
frankly, it is a horrible book. Don't worry about reading the book, uh, how I raised myself from failure to success and selling. But there, as, as these things go, there was one point in this book that I read very, very early in my career that, uh, that really struck me. And he, and he just said this simple thing. He said, show me someone that will earnestly excitedly go out and share their story with five people a day. And, and I'll show you someone that can't help, but be successful. And, and again, these two pieces, this, this sort of confidence and conviction and knowing that you're the best, uh, coupled with this very, again, very simple notion that you, that you, you have to share that you have to figure out a way to share that story. And it's really those two items that, that we concentrate our, our, our coaching and consulting practice on. And it's, and it's that concept of just know it, that confidence and conviction and just knowing four very critical things. One is know your business. You have to know exactly what your business looks like and, and more specifically the type of clients that you're best suited to serve and, and that you want and need to replicate. The second point is your team, a high degree of confidence and conviction in the people around you, the people that are helping you serve the clients and, and, and knowing that they're the absolute best at what they do. And the third point, know your contact, really kind of know your communication. I think that gives us a lot of anxiety in the business uh, among financial advisors is that we're, are we communicating with our clients in the best way, in the best light? Are we, are we covering them the way they should be covered? Are we connecting with them uh, in the ways that we want to connect with them? And then last but not least, certainly this sort of confidence in con confidence and conviction in your story. What is it that you do? What is it that you do better than anybody else? And can you articulate that to a client or a prospect in language? This is important in language that they can understand. And, and maybe even more important than that, is it a story that your clients could potentially communicate to someone else? If someone asks them why they work with their advisor or why their advisor is the best, could they communicate that? So we're going to dig into each one of these a little bit deeper. Uh, this first one we're going to talk about is know your business, this confidence and conviction in what your business is and, and how to how to expand that. You probably recognize this guy. Uh, if you don't recognize him, you might recognize his name, Vilfredo Pareto. Uh, if you don't recognize that, you might recognize the Pareto principle. But I know you recognize the concept of the 80-20 rule. He's the one that first introduced this idea that that a, a relatively small percentage of your uh, business, uh, very small percentage of the people in your business are going to produce a significant amount of the revenue. So 20% of your clients are going to produce 80% of the revenue. What's interesting is he was in, actually in the manufacturing business. And that was even true for that. The 20% uh, of the people are going to produce 80% of the output in the manufacturing business. And, and I like this idea, obviously, of focusing on those top 20 relationships and figuring out ways to replicate those. But we take it one step further. When we do a business analysis, we like to look at the top 50% of revenue. When we look at a, a, a book of business, we like to really kind of zero in on this top 50% of the business. Uh, it's just a really nice line of demarcation if you think about it. Uh, why would we want to grow the business with anything less than where that 50th percentile is? Uh, we're not necessarily looking, most of us are not necessarily looking for more clients. We want to make sure we're going after the right clients. And that, 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 that client that fits in the top 50% of your revenue production uh, is, is it just a really strong point. So in this particular case, we're looking at a book of business, $2 million in revenue, 304 total relationships, and this represents 50% of the revenue, 26 relationships, 8.55% of the total clients represent half of the revenue. That's just a, that's just a, a point that we want to make sure that we're looking at uh, when we're talking about someone's book of business, a really important uh, line item here is this 16,493. And, and what that represents is the trailing 12 revenue from the 26th relationship, the 50th percentile. And, and we talk about that number, whatever that is for each individual book that we're talking about, we talk about that number as really being a minimum pursuit. 
not a minimum account size, not a minimum new relationship size. We're going to talk about that in just a second, but really minimum pursuit. What, what is the minimum size relationship that we should be spending time, money, money, energy, effort in pursuing? And, and, and that's what this looks like for this book of business. Next, we talk about this service section of the book, which is that typical 80-20. In this case, 80% of the revenue coming from 27% of the relationships, 28% of the relationships. And the same thing here, this bottom number here, this 5,974 in this particular example, that's the, that is sort of the, the line that we want to start to talk about is not having any new relationships below that line. Next, talking about anchor. The anchor part of the book, as the name, name might suggest, is what we feel like is, is kind of dragging us down, slowing us down in most cases. So in this particular case, we're talking about 128 relationships that account for 42% of the total relationships, but only account for less than or 4.92% of revenue, less than 5% of revenue. Uh, so we, we just really have to be sure that we're that we have a plan for this segment of the book and or uh, maybe those clients could possibly be serviced by someone else, better serviced by someone else. Second thing I want to touch on is this concept of know your team. You can be really good at what you do and you can be really confident in the way that you do it. You could be really confident in all of these other items. But if you if you know that you've got a team or a team member that's not up up to caliber, uh, some things probably need to change because that can that can be one of the most frustrating things that we help our, our clients deal with is having the team, the team members that are uh, as as that you're as confident and convicted in as you are these other areas. We do a couple of things that one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to utilize something called a Colby A index. And it just this is this is a very simple, straightforward test. It's really short. It's 36 questions. It takes 15 minutes. Uh, it's uh, it, it's not uh, it's not a gotcha kind of thing. It's just we, we have team members and it ranks them uh, in their strength, their natural strengths for things like fact finder, follow through, quick start and implementer. And it just begins to make sure that we've got the right people in the right places. The second thing that we that we'll talk about with the team our roles and responsibilities in, in, in making sure that their natural tendencies, what they're good at, what they're comfortable and confident doing, that they're spending most of their time doing those things. This is a worksheet, a process that we take clients through, their teams through uh, to make sure that we're, we're evaluating overall roles and responsibilities. Know your contact, um, know your communication, know your client communication. Again, I, I mentioned this earlier. I think this is one of the areas that we probably struggle with the most uh, in in knowing whether or not we're communicating with our clients or us having conviction that we're communicating with our clients in the best possible way. I love this quote from Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert. He simply says, you know, losers have goals and winners have systems. You just simply have to have a good system, a good communication system uh, around client communication. These are just some simple examples. You know, we just roughly, we're going to talk about A clients, B clients, and Z clients, and the types of service, services and the frequency of those services for each one of those. Again, not our opinion of what good client service is, but what your, the advisor's idea of good client service is for A's and B's and Z's. I'll, I'll touch on these briefly. Review meeting is a planned scheduled meeting. An internal review is simply you, the advisor, taking a deep dive, a close look at their uh, at their accounts to be sure that there's no uh, fractional mutual fund shares in there or some cash that's hit the account that's been sitting there for too long. We, especially on those very top relationships that account for that top 50% of revenue, we just want to be sure that we're on top of catching any junk, any anything in those accounts that doesn't look quite right. The other piece here is personal email. This is just not a bulk email. This is an email from you to a client with a specific point that you want to share with them. A social meeting is something uh, could be golf, could be sporting clays, could be going to a museum opening, could be could be uh, a flower show, could be something 
uh, that is not a regular meeting, but it's something that 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 you know your client would appreciate, something that that would would help strengthen that relationship. A social call is quite simply a call to call, a call from you or your team to to check in on someone, to let them know that you're thinking about them and just see how they're doing. Could be on the back of a trip, could be on the back of some sort of medical issue, could be on the back of a grandchild uh, being being new to the family. Business call is a business call. I know you know what that is. Review note, w- one of the biggest um, sort of multipliers, these last four items really, the review note, the personal note, the staff call and the unique gift, are what we really consider some pretty big difference makers in those top relationships. The review note is, it needs to have a handwritten component to it, but it might, I think I have an example here. Yeah. So this is an example of a review note. And and this would be, uh, this would be something that I think it needs a handwritten component. So it doesn't come off as boilerplate, boilerplate, but it's, it's simply, I wanted you to know that we brought our team together today to talk about your specific relationship with us. Each person had some pre-work to do before they came to the meeting. We sat down, we reviewed every aspect of your relationship and everything looks great. So this is what that might look like, but, but this gives the client a very warm, fuzzy feeling to think that their advisory team sat down together and talked about their specific situation it's a huge point of leverage. And, and we think uh, we are convinced that the clients uh, really value this almost as much as that long face-to-face meeting, uh, especially if we're doing social meetings and, and some of these other things along the way. A personal note is simply a handwritten note on a personal piece of stationery that says, I was just thinking about you, or I hope you enjoyed having the grandkids in town or congratulations on selling your business or whatever the case may be, but that personal handwritten note, that doesn't say anything about business. It's that of recognition of the relationship, recognition of their success, recognition of something that's going on in their life. Call from staff, staff call <clears throat> is simply the, the a call from someone besides the financial advisor to the client. It can be just as simple as I just want to reach out and see how you were doing. I want to call and check on you. Is there anything that we need to be taking care of for you? And again, this is somebody besides the financial advisor. Last, but certainly not least, especially on those top 20, 30 relationships, this notion of a unique gift. Frankly, I've never been a big fan of birthday gifts or holiday gifts, Christmas gifts. I think they just kind of get lost in the mix, but a, a unique, thoughtful gift um, one of my favorite examples is one of our clients shared a story that one of, so one of our clients, an advisor, shared a story about uh, one of their clients who was a former professional baseball player. And at this point in time, his grandson was going to be starting with a, with a college and, and being on the pitching, um, the pitching, uh, being a starting pitcher with a, with a very significant college baseball team. And the advisor ordered up two of that, that college's baseball, baseball logoed baseball hats, uh, put a personal note in there, sent it off to the, to the client and just said simply, I know you guys are excited. I wanted you to be ready for that first pitch. So when I say unique gift, it takes a little bit of time. And frankly, you get in the habit of it. You get better and better at it. But it's it's just one of those pieces that makes a huge difference uh, in, in strengthening, strengthening that relationship. This fourth point of know your story. We can't and, and no consultant or coach can tell you what your story is. But what we do strive to do is help you figure out what it is that makes you different in your market, in what you do, and then help you tell that story, your story, in a way that resonates with people and and makes sense. One of the things I, I will say, and I always like to point this out, I think the industry has done a little bit of a disservice to most financial advisors and trying to convince them that they don't need to know much about the investment process. I will say that I do think the investment piece, the investment story, how what you think about investments and how you invest their money does need to be part of the story. Uh, this notion that somebody else is going to take care of the investment side and you're going to manage that process, I think I think if you're not careful, that can get really confusing to the client. 
after all, you, you're, I, I can guarantee you, you are the smartest investment person they know. If they didn't think that they wouldn't be in, they, they wouldn't be working with you. Therefore, when, when we start talking about hiring other people to manage the money, it just gets really confusing. So I would be careful with that. But there's plenty of different directions we can go. We can talk about an investment process. We can talk about a very comprehensive planning process. We can talk about an all-encompassing, almost like a family office type approach to handling clients and how that's unique and different. There's some critical points in here. It needs to be you. It needs to be what you do and how you do it. It needs to be something that you have deep conviction and, and confidence in what you're doing and how you're doing it. And it just needs to be communicated. And we usually do that in a, in a PowerPoint process, help our clients put together their story in a way that they can repeat. And, and frankly, clients can compete, can repeat, excuse me, in a way that clients can also repeat it. Here's an example, just a quick example. This is an investment story, but I want to share this with you to show my point of how simple this can be. Now, this is an advisor who's been around for a long time. He started in the business in 1977, uh, continues to bring in, he's one of our clients that brings in the most new assets on an annual basis continuously. Um, con excuse me. He continues to bring in uh, among our clients some of the highest level of assets. And this is a cornerstone of what he talks about has this single piece of paper that he lays down in front of the client. And he says, you know, I've been doing this since 1977. And since that point in time, I've been following and owning myself and buying for the benefit of my clients, a group of companies that consistently pay a dividend and raise that dividend every year for a minimum of 25 years. This is a process that served us very well uh, over this period. There's a couple of other things that I like to make sure besides just paying the dividend. So there's a little bit more to the process. One is we want to make sure these, these companies are very financially fit. And frankly, that comes from the banking side, the credit side. You have a credit score. I have a credit score. Companies have a credit score. Mine and yours are numbers. Typically something over 720 is considered really good. Uh, the companies are are letter grades. So an A is good, a double A is better, a triple A is even better than that. But we want to make sure we're owning A or better credit quality companies in this portfolio. And the last thing that we do on a routine basis is we want to make sure that the companies that we own aren't paying out too much of their profits in the form of a dividend. That's called a payout ratio. So we want to make sure that their dividend payments are less than 50% of their profit. And, and that's that's just a process that we stay on top of on a regular basis. And this is a core investment process for our clients. So that's a very simple, it's an investment process, but it's a very simple approach that a client can begin to understand and, 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 and grasp. One of the other things I want to just mention quickly is when we get to the point that we're in the story where we're talking about what we're actually going to do with their investments and how they're going to be deployed and how they're going to be invested. I, I see this over and over where there's just a, a thick, uh, could be two pages, could be eight pages, could be a hundred pages of, of what, how their money is going to be invested, how their investments are going to be deployed. And this is just a very simple approach that we've uh, introduced to our clients and it's, it's been very successful. And that is just to break it down. Now, now listen, there's obviously there's going to be additional uh, supporting documents, right? You, you, you have prospectus that need to have to be delivered to the clients, but I'm just talking about you're sitting with the client in person, explaining how their investments are going to be divided, how this money that they're giving you is going to be deployed. And, and this is a, a process by which we just walk them through it. You know, here's how much is going to be in cash management. Here's, here's the amount that's going to be in the municipal bond ladder, what percentage that represents our quality income portfolio, our, our enhanced income portfolio. This single uh, slide, uh, I think has probably won more business than anything we've ever helped our clients with because the client, I hear this repeatedly. The client says, this makes perfect sense. Thank you so much. This, this is something that, 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 that I can follow. And, and this is the thing I've been looking for. So that's it. It's incredibly important to have this confidence and conviction in what you do and how you do it. 
this, this knowledge of your business, the types of clients that you work with, and, and more importantly, the types of clients that you want to pursue. A high degree of confidence and conviction in your team, which is you, obviously, but everybody that supports you. And, and we, we've had phenomenal success in getting people uh, to the next level from a team standpoint. Sometimes it's as simple as changing their roles, uh, changing some of their responsibilities and making those more align with what their natural talents are. And sometimes it could be a different person in that role. Knowing your contact, knowing beyond any shadow of a doubt that you're communicating with your clients exactly the way that you want to be and the way that they want to be. And really kind of raising that bar on those top 15, 20, 30 relationships. And that's the key to real growth. Knowing your story and, and, and to quote Frank Betcher again, or paraphrase Frank Betcher, know your story and, and be able to share that with a certain number of people a day or a certain number of people a week. And that's where uh, you can really see your, your business uh, take off. Appreciate your time. And here's my contact information. Uh, if there's anything that I can ever help you with, you got any more questions on anything we talked about here today, I'd love the opportunity to visit with you. Thanks.